Hi, my name is Don Nelson. I'm publisher of Cutting Tool Engineering and Micro Manufacturing Magazine. And I am here with Dave Povich. He is the president of Tool Alliance, which is a manufacturer of carbide cutting tools. And he is also the recently elected president of the United States Cutting Tool Institute. And we are here in Chicago at IMTS 2012. And Dave and I were going to get together for a few minutes to talk about uh, some trends in the manufacturing economy environment, uh, particularly from the perspective of USCTI members. And we're also going to maybe look at a couple trends that are affecting and may, may affect the USCTI members in the near term. Dave, uh, as a group, how does USCTI project the manufacturing economy for the next oh, six months, 12 months? Well, we're working off of a nice backlog right now, Don. I think um, most member companies uh, you know, have enjoyed uh, the last two years, uh, have been very robust, and um, they've built additional capacity to, to service their customers. And um, right now, uh, you know, I think things still look strong for the next six to 12 months. Okay. What, what factors are contributing to that uh, in the economy as a whole? Or manufacturing coming back to the United States? I, I think the reshoring initiative uh, and the similar programs like that have had an effect. I think uh, people that had taken work overseas have figured out that uh, you know the cost of logistics and the cost of uh, uh, additional inventories and, and the lead times and the quality issues that they suffered uh, you know from overseas has real dollar costs and I think they've come up with other methods of measuring that cost and um, consequently uh, have made decisions to bring bring work back home. So I think that's a lot to do with it. The automobile rebound uh, for the industry has obviously had a big effect. Um, the aerospace industry is, you know, at all-time record levels and uh, all-time record backlogs, and um, especially with the single aisle planes, you know, the Neo and the 737 Max um, are just setting all kinds of uh, order uh, records and. Um, so right now, um, things look, look pretty solid. Okay, it's kind of a, a follow-up to that. Uh, the, the manufacturing that's coming back, is it, is it just high precision work, or is it uh, is the, um, the, the lower cost, low, high volume products, are that still saying offshore? I, I would say, you know, it's obviously gonna be the, the, the more uh, higher value added type of work, um, but, you know, just work in general that had gone chasing lower costs. Uh, you know, maybe they initially went to Mexico and and then possibly went to Vietnam and then China and, and is now coming back. It's because the the cost of doing that work is escalating rapidly uh, uh, in the other uh, areas. So it's not just the factors I cited earlier. It's actually the the cost of manufacturing in China is much much higher. Labor costs are increasing at a very high rate. So there's a lot of talk here, Dave, and at this show, and in the trade press, and, and even in consumer magazines about the, the growth of additive manufacturing, where you, you build up from the bottom up, layer upon layer, and you know your companies, and uh, certainly uh, USCTI members, they, they tend to pick, hitch their wagon, let's say, to subtractive type of procedures. Um, what do you think going forward, uh, additive manufacturing, what is that going to play in the manufacturing environment? Is that, is that a threat or is it going to, we're going to someday just have AM parts? Yeah. First of all, the technology is, is just mind-boggling. You know, it, it, uh, it's hard to even wrap your, your head around it. It's, it's, it is. It's scary. It, 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 it's sort of, uh, especially as a cutting tool manufacturer, it's, it's very frightening because uh, you can see the possibilities. but. Um, you know, at the end of the day, it's going to depend on whether it's just going to be a prototyping tool or whether the quality and cost, you know, can beat out um, traditional metalworking, you know. So um, uh, I think it'll be the responsibility of the, of the metalworking community to make sure that their methods and uh, costs and, and operational procedures are as efficient as possible to fend off any new technologies like that. As I mentioned earlier, right, right at the beginning of the interview, 
you were just recently elected uh, president of the United States Cutting Tool Institute, and is that a two-year term? It is two years. Two -year term. Well, what, what kind of things to, uh, would you like to accomplish in your ten tenure or to set in motion in yeah. the next two years? Uh, one of our big initiatives right now, Don, is to um, uh, some of our larger me uh, members have uh, expressed a desire to have a really rock-solid, concrete um, number for the size of the market in North America, uh, uh, for the total size of the market. So uh, what we've done is uh, initiated um, a, a, a study with uh, AMT, the organizers of this great event, and uh, we've had uh, initial meetings already, and we are going to attempt to uh, consolidate uh, our statistics program so that we can tell all of our members uh, um, just for sure how big this market is in North America for, for cutting tools. Okay. All right, great. Well, that's uh, very ambitious. I know there's, uh, over the years, people have come to me and all the time saying, well, what's the size of the market? How many end mills are sold? There's, there's no number. Right. There's no number. So I wanted to thank Dave for agreeing to an interview today. And uh, this is Don Nelson. Thank you very much.